Hi there. So this is episode one of the Fast Bowling Workload Education Series. I'm Henry Woodward. I'm joined by Mel Tree and Angus Lalibra. Mel's going to kick things off with the demands of fast bowling, then pass to me on the importance of strength and conditioning. Then Angus is going to finish things off with progressive overload. Over to you, Mel. Thanks, Henry. Most of you would already know that fast bowlers have an important role on any team. If you needed further convincing though, when looking at statistics of our top three male fast bowlers, the greater number of matches they were available for, the more matches their teams won. This means the success of the teams they were on was related to their match availability. As a pathway fast bowler, it's even more than that. It's about making sure you're available for training and match play so you can develop your skill and prepare your body for the demands of bowling. We call it putting money in the bank since the more progressive bowling you do, the more your body can withstand as you grow and develop. Fast bowling is a challenging movement and it's tough on your body. The aim of fast bowling is to deliver a fast or tricky ball to reduce the batter's ability to make a correct decision about the path of the ball. To do this as a fast bowler, you will transfer momentum from your run-up and through your entire body to get maximum ball speed at release. Doing this with the most efficiency and accuracy will increase your ability to trick the batter. To give you more perspective of how tough your body needs to be, we can compare the amount of ground reaction force that goes through your body between fast bowling and running. In fast bowling, six to 11 times your body weight can go through your body, while in running, it's three to four times your body weight. We've also given you a snapshot of what an average fast bowler will experience in a 50 over match. The average fast bowler can cover 15 to 20 kilometers total distance of running. Two to six kilometers of this is high speed running. So we hope that puts into context how much preparation your body needs to keep you bowling your best and keep you on the pitch. Here's an example of how much force goes through your front foot. So I'm gonna go through why conditioning, speed and strength is important for bowlers. Given the demands of fast bowling that Mel has just outlined, it is crucial that bowlers are well conditioned. When we talk about conditioning, we mean endurance and the capacity to do work. This infographic on screen shows that fitter players recover faster between bouts of exercise. This is obviously important for bowlers who often need to bowl long spells or multiple spells across the course of a day. When players aren't well conditioned, injury risk increases because there is an earlier onset fatigue and so the body will start to move less efficiently, meaning that certain areas of the body, and in the case of fast bowlers, the lumbar spine, will start to compensate. Bottom line, fitter players have a reduced risk of injury. When we talk about training speed, the aim is to obviously get faster, but there is also an injury prevention side to this too. When sprinting, sprinting with maximal intent, upwards of three to five times body weight is transferred through the body. This isn't quite the level of force that Mel mentioned fast bowlers are subjected to, but when it does, get us, but it does get us closer and provides us with more exposure than other forms of training. There is also evidence that the high impacts that accompany speed work and plyometric exercises increase bone strength. This infographic again highlights that training speed reduces the risk of injury. Finally, why is strength important? So put simply, stronger players have a reduced risk of injury. But if we dig a bit deeper into bone health, when we do strength training in the gym and load a muscle, we also load bone, which in turn increases bone strength. For example, when doing a plank, your abdominal muscles contract and pull on the bones around your lumbar spine and pelvis which in turn strengthens these areas over a period of training. This infographic, as well as other research, demonstrates that stronger players have a reduced risk of injury. Now, while general strength exercises improve bone density, bone adapts to very specific types of loading and exercises. This is why we include exercises like med ball slams and rotations, but nothing beats a well-planned progressive bowling plan when it comes to specific lumbar spine bone adaptations. 
In the world of ancient Greece, few athletes were as renowned as the great Milo of Croton, who was a celebrated strongman, champion wrestler, and revered war hero. Legend has it that one day a newborn calf was born near Milo's home, and he decided to lift the small animal up and carry it on his shoulders. The next day he returned and did the same thing. Whilst Milo continued his strategy for the next four years, the calf grew each day until he was no longer lifting a calf, but a four-year-old bull. This story exemplifies how progressive overload has been utilized for thousands of years and in turn provides evidence as to why we still use this fundamental principle to design and implement bowling workloads for junior fast bowlers. Our aim for you is to play as much cricket as possible and being able to play season after season builds a fantastic foundation for you to move forward in your cricket career, regardless of whether that ends up being in a professional setting or not. Workload guidelines are predicated on addressing the dual risk threshold where both under bowling and over bowling has the potential to increase the risk of injury. This dual risk threshold indicates that bowlers need to maintain a compatible workload year round low enough so that repetitive stress injuries are minimized yet high enough to facilitate positive training adaptations corresponding to the demands of the task. As shown in the graph, periods of recovery are essential in facilitating positive adaptation. Recovery isn't just in between sessions. It's important to incorporate recovery into bowling reloading plans, and this is evident in the concept of three to four weeks on with one week off following this. Milo wasn't expected to lift a four-year-old bull on his first day. Physiological adaptations occur over many years and highlight, highlight that bowling workloads are a journey. Parents and coaches should be aware that programs designed for senior fast bowlers are not appropriate for junior players due to a number of risk factors that will be explored in a later lecture. Overall, the best ability is availability and for you as a young cricketer, we are aiming to maximise every opportunity for you to play the sport you love.